Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com, back to talk about more failed Volkswagen parts. Today we're going to be looking at TSI, high pressure fuel pumps. So it's good to be back in the studio after an awesome trip down to Soho. If you want to see my Soho video, I will of course put a link in the show notes. But today we're talking about the failure of the 2.0 TSI CCTA engine code high pressure fuel pump. Before we get into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which is Deutsche Auto Parts. These guys are the Volkswagen Audi parts experts. Awesome service, great prices, a ton of really cool DIY videos. I'll mention a video later on in the show about this specific part. So check them out at shopdap.com. You know, I mentioned their DIY videos. That was actually the thing I heard the most about them down in Soho was how awesome their videos were and how much everybody really appreciated the hard work that they do. Because you know, it's it's hard. It's a lot of work to, uh, to make a DIY video. So uh, check them out again, shopdap.com. All right, so what the heck is a high pressure fuel pump? Well, like a lot of car parts, it tells you exactly what it does in the name. It is a fuel pump that creates high pressure fuel. So this creates the high pressure fuel needed for direct injection engines. All the Volkswagen engines that are direct injection do have a high pressure fuel pump. Some are a little bit different than the others. This is off the CCTA again, 2.0 turbo. The BPY 2.0 turbo had a little different pump. And now the third gen 1.8 turbo and two liter turbos are a little different as well. And even the hybrid has a high pressure fuel pump that is slightly different. I actually have one on the stand I tried to take apart, but uh, that didn't go so well. So how do these high pressure fuel pumps work? Well, there's a lobe on the camshaft that actually pushes this spring in and out, and that's what creates the high pressure fuel. There's also a solenoid on top that allows the ECM to electronically control it. Low pressure is brought in through this fitting here. The high pressure is created inside of this pump, then pumped down through a metal line into the fuel rail, then into the injectors, and then in turn directly injected into the cylinders. There's also an additional fuel pump on the gas engines, which does create low fuel pressure as well as volume, and that's the pump that's inside the tank. So how do they fail? Well, up until today, I would have said 99% of the failures have been with the electronic solenoid. Volkswagen actually has a technical service bulletin about diagnosing this exact part, where what we do is we get either a Volkswagen scan tool or VAGCOM. We output test it and see if this solenoid clicks. If the solenoid clicks according to Volkswagen, that means the high pressure fuel pump is good, and we need to continue diagnosis. And that's worked really well for me over the years of diagnosing it that way. But as luck would have it, I was walking around the shop trying to find another high pressure fuel pump because I wanted to cut it open and see what it looked like. And lo and behold, I found this. One of the guys had just replaced this high pressure fuel pump and he noticed that he still had no high pressure fuel. He was also hearing a little bit of rattling coming from the fuel pump area. And when he pulled the pump back out, he found out that the Pinto was broken. So luckily that car didn't go anywhere before he found that. And uh, that's I think actually the first one I've seen. So they only fail in a couple of ways, but all of them result in no high pressure fuel or really low high pressure fuel. So how do we know we might have a bad high pressure fuel pump? Well, odds are we're gonna have a check engine light and we're gonna have a code associated with the check engine light, something like low fuel rail pressure or fuel rail pressure too low, basically something telling you, hey, the fuel pressure is too low. In addition to the check engine light, we might also have code stored for misfires. We might have no or really poor acceleration. And on the rare occasion, it may actually be a no start, but usually the pump in the tank has enough fuel pressure and volume to actually let the car start. Usually what we do, we go out, it has an extended crank. We crank the car up, drive it in the shop, and then do our fuel system testing in the shop but it could absolutely cause a no start condition. As far as diagnosing it, we actually really do need some special tools to do this. We need either a scan tool or VAGCOM. We'll look at measuring value block 140 and we should read our fuel pressure. At idle, your fuel pressure is generally 40 bar with a good fuel pump. And if we have a bad fuel pump, it can be anywhere from six to 10 bar, depending on how bad it is. Your readings may be a little bit different, but usually you see them at either six to 10 or all the way at 40, depending on how they failed. And again, 40 is a good number at idle. Before we replace the high pressure fuel pump, we need to make sure that our low pressure fuel is good. I usually hook up the low pressure fuel gauge and just double check it. Most of the time it's this pump, but I always wanna make sure I'm checking my low side because if your low side doesn't have enough pressure, then your high side can't have enough pressure either. I'm gonna put a link to the Ross Tech Wiki page where it actually walks you through step-by-step -step exactly on how to do this. This part's too expensive just to slap one on and see what happens. So. Go ahead and do a bit of diagnosis before we replace the part. 
Like a lot of parts, there's not really a common failure time or common failure mileage. I've seen them as low as three to 4,000 miles, and then there's plenty of cars over 100,000 miles running around on the original high pressure fuel pump. So it really all depends probably on batch numbers and production dates and whatnot, or just completely random shot in the dark on when they fail. So is this a DIY? It is absolutely a DIY. Two T30 screws, a 17 millimeter wrench to loosen up the fuel line, as well as some hose clamp pliers to take the clamp and the low pressure line off, and you're good to go. This shouldn't be anything more than about a 30 minute repair if you have never done one before. If you have, you know how long it takes, and it's about a 10 to 15 minute job including going back and checking your fuel pressure after you've replaced the parts. So if you want to take on a DIY challenge, this is probably one of the easier ones. And if you need some guidance, I actually did a video with the boys over at Deutsch Auto on replacing this on a CCTA engine. It was actually Paul's CC that we did it on. So um, check it out. I'll put a link in the show notes again to that video. And the best part, you don't need any special tools to do this job. You'll lose a little bit of fuel, so you want to have some rags to clean it up with, but that's about as challenging as it gets. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at HumbleMechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously here on YouTube. And one quick shout-out to Deutsch Auto Parts. Thank you guys for having me down at Solo. I really appreciate that. It's always good to hang out with you and uh, chat with a bunch of Volkswagen enthusiasts about all the cool Volkswagen stuff. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Car shows. Smart for